Yo, 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 Multiply here, and yeah, we got something a bit different today. I thought I'd mix things up and do something a bit different, because different's always good. Um, yeah, it's basically something, I don't know if you've seen the Future Music magazine, like in the studio things, where they kind of, they spend maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, talking about a track that one of the top guys has made, and they kind of, they deconstruct it. They told you, tell you their motivations behind what they were doing, how it all worked, how it came together, and basically more about the creative process, as well as, of course, telling you about the engineering side of things, because as useful as it is knowing how to make a preset, presets alone don't make tracks, and synth lines or MIDI clips, they don't make tracks. It's the whole, the whole thing is the track, and especially when you're starting out, I I didn't know what I was doing. Even little things like, I didn't even know you had to have these bits or these bits, but you need these bits in these bits. And yeah, I'm basically, I'm here to tell you about how the whole track came together from coming up with the idea to arrangement, how I actually engineered it to what details are in there, why have I got this bit, what are that doing, what's that doing? Is that supposed to be there? Is that chopped off? Is that supposed to do that? The whole lot, yeah. So, yeah, basically, I'm gonna deconstruct the track and it may take a while, but you know what? I love it when I saw the pros do this, so even though I guess I'm not a Vinci level or anything, um, I have had tracks in the top 10, so I guess I'm one step above newbie, so yeah. Um, hope you like it anyway. And yeah, basically we're going to do it with this track called Love Hate, which is unreleased at the moment. In fact, I'm pretty sure none of you have heard it, although you may have heard me make the electro preset things. I've shown you that bit. And yeah, it's basically finished. Um, although I haven't mastered it in this project, I exported it and I did master it and I'll tell you what I did there. Sweet, so before I get into the actual deconstruction part, um, introduce the whole thing. Now I'll just let the whole thing play out. Um, in fact, will I let the whole thing play out? Yeah, I'm gonna let the whole thing play out. And then, because since none of you have heard it, and then yeah, I'll deconstruct it. Sweet, I'll just turn the mic off so it doesn't ruin the sound.
pretty cool. So yeah, that was the track. And yeah, it's kind of, it's not too complicated, but there's enough going on for me to kind of do this breakdown thing, because it's pretty standard. So standard enough anyway. So how did the track come about? Well, I started off, I heard the track EKG by Autoerotic and that basically motivated the whole thing because it had this triplety just this mad it basically sounded like this something like that except at 128 beats per minute or 130 instead of 140 and i thought yeah that sounds mad i want to do something like that um it's triplety it's kind of it's simple but it's really ravey and it's kind of it's quite trendy to do it all at like 140 now it's kind of like dismantles doing a lot of that kind of stuff and I always like kind of high energy synthy stuff at 140 beats a minute. It's pretty cool. So, um, and they got this cool kind of like half time stuff there, and there, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, it's basically it's taking an idea and then putting my own twist on it, um, and of course leaving it in a format that DJs can play and people can kind of get a grip on because basically the whole point of music in general is you need to have it have something that people are expecting and, and they can relate to and then need to put something new on it something they don't expect and something they can't relate to simply to kind of make it interesting and it's finding that balance that's the whole point of this it's literally that sums up the whole of making music you need to have enough of something people know and then enough new stuff for them to be interested that's basically what i'm doing so for example like for the build for example it's really predictable and then right before the drop it becomes unpredictable it's kind of it's a bit weird it throws you off and yeah that's kind of the whole point and yeah it's like this bit for example it goes from being pretty pretty floor to the floor pretty kind of dancey and ravey and then just changes up a bit into something a bit different and that's always good it's always good so yeah how did it actually start well basically i wanted to go for this ekg style thing and so i started off with just literally this little bit here started off with electro one this preset uh, i've actually in another video shown you how i made this preset so i'm not going to tell you how i made the preset in detail but I basically made it all in massive and literally that's all there is to it. There's the kick and that synth, which has the bass in it as well. And if you look, that's literally all there is in it. And that's a pretty common electro thing to kind of strip it back for the drop and then kind of add stuff back in. Um, it's just an electro thing, like dubstep tends to have everything in on the drop. Um, but yeah, that's just preference. And yeah, what did I do after that? I basically, I made some variations on it. Oh, I got a text. Oh, I'll ignore that. Um, yeah, basically I made some variations on it and that's pretty standard as well. You keep making variations and then you create a pattern and that's basically what I did. Like I had, I think it's, yeah, these four noises here. And then I simply chose a pattern I liked. Pretty simple that's kind of it's a super common thing so if you kind of you want to make a pattern make some noises make a pattern that works now a good tip is if you have kind of the same bit at the beginning of each section and then you like mix up the end bit that's pretty standard it's like having the same bit every say in this case two bars gives it that predictability which is good and then by changing up this end bit it keeps things interesting uh, that's basically if you're having struggle coming up patterns that work it's probably because you're not having this idea that you kind of you repeat a bit every now and then and then kind of you change it up over a different interval if that makes sense so like this is changed up over every two bars um whereas this is the same every two bars actually no this this is this is the same over four bars that one and that one and this is the same this is different over or well, the same over like 16 bars and this is the same over two bars it's kind of it's tried and tested it's what everyone does so yeah if you're having trouble making patterns just 
make it a little bit more repetitive than you initially think. Like it's not completely random. Like even really complicated screw like stuff. Like actually listen to it and you realise that every like say four bars or every, say every two bars it will start with the same growl. And you but you don't you don't realise that, but it does. Like every two bars, every four bars start with the same growl, something like that, and then they'll mix up the end bit. And then every sixteen bars they'll repeat most of the six I'll say like they'll have an eight bar bit and then slightly different eight bar bit and then they'll repeat the first eight bar bit but just change the end and that's basically how you how you keep things interesting while not changing things up too much because if you change things up too much people just get thrown off too much and you want to throw people off just the right amount that's kind of super key um that's kind of what i try to do here and yeah to start off with that literally just kick synth noise and then after that i thought i wanted to mix things up a bit because you can't just have four to the floor banging kick drums forever because that's like a minute you get a bit tired people get bored of dancing they get too tired so got to slow things down a bit when you start like doing that so kind of did this half time you start a thing where it's like half time but not quite if you look here it's kind of it's not quite half time well it, i guess it's half time but the kicks aren't as predictable which is nice but especially with the fact there's the um the bass drops for there's no bass in electro five and six it's kind of it's nice because it, it's the same style of noise but it's like the bass goes and the kicks pattern change so it's kind of it's a it's a subtle change without just confusing everyone so just show you this little bit like the transition bit See, it's quite nice how the bass goes now. The bass isn't in your face. It's just kind of there. Um, so you kind of, you don't necessarily know it's there. It just feels heavier. Like only producers really know that there's bass there. Everyone else just thinks it's heavier. So it's nice to kind of empty it out because people don't realize it's kind of, they'll listen to that and they'll just think it's heavy and cool. And then it's like, you took something away. People didn't realize it was there. It's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, and then I literally did the same thing made some made some other patterns following the same idea like this is that 16 bars it's pretty similar to that 16 bars except literally there's a few minor changes like the end bit is different and that might even be it and then the kicks are slightly different like you just want to repeat things but make a few little edits that's really really important because you don't want to just keep changing things up every eight, eight bars as nice as that is because you've got to you can't just have the same four bars over and over again for like the whole track but you don't want to having to keep writing a new bit every eight bars because it just confuses everyone it's more work so just small changes copy and paste make a small change super important tip um especially for people really new to arranging kind of patterns and all that all that kind of basic basic melody stuff um yeah, so that's basically what I did. I did that whole chunk, and then I thought, well, that's kind of the main dancey bit. There's going to be another dancey bit. That's pretty standard. Like in dance music, you have like intro, some kind of breakdowny build thing, dancey bit, and then kind of a different dancey bit, and then repeat, and then except with an outro. And usually you you just do that twice, and then it's six minutes sorted. So pretty much the same here as here like looking at it it's very very similar um there's very few differences like it's pretty much that copy and paste it to here with like two changes if i can spot right maybe one change and then of course change the drums here so i've got half time drums here and then it kind of breaks into full time drums which is quite nice because it's like this drop is different so it's the same style but it's just it's all about just making little differences throughout the whole track. Just copy and paste, make a small difference. Literally, that's how it all works. Oh, still recording, pretty sweet. So for example, like this drop. Throws people off a bit because it's like, have this pretty much the same build and then people expect to kind of four, a four to the floor pump and ragey drop. And then it's kind of drops into half time. It's a bit different. I mean, the. The electric guys have been doing it for a while. Um, they've been having the kind of the second drop being half time and stuff. I mean, it's nothing new, but it's 
still throws people off in just the right amount of way. I mean, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's pretty standard stuff. And then, again, don't no need to reinvent the wheel. Have that little half-time bit to confuse people and make it a bit more interesting. And then drop straight back into four to the floor. And suddenly, this four to the floor pattern here seems a lot nicer because you've had the half-time. So... <laughs> You see that fourth floor never would have sounded as good without that bit there, and it's yeah, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, and then yeah, literally, that's what I did there. And then I had that dancey bit, that new bit, and then this kind of second drop, as you call it. And I thought, right, that's the main, the meat of the track done, because it's pretty pretty standard producer technique to start off with the kind of the climax, the drop, as you, if you want to call it that, or. I guess it's maybe called the chorus. I don't even know what you can actually call it, but the kind of the main dancey bit after the build. Um, best start with there. Get that sounding good, and you're happy days really. The rest is comes a lot easier. Otherwise, you can you can make this amazing build, and then you can't really put a drop in without it sounding too out of place. So it's kind of easier to work backwards. Yeah. Also, once you've done this bit, that's the best bit done. Sorted. You've done the hard work, so. Easy, right. What happened then? Well, basically at this stage, I had actually arranged it as much as I put this on the 65th bar. And I put this on the 161th whatever bar that is. Um, basically because if you're new to like dance music, uh, which I'm sure some of you are, everything needs to get done in even chunks. Like you have one bar, two bar, four bar, eight bar, 16 bar, 32 bar, 64 bar, like just arrange it in big chunks. So you have like 32 bar chunk, 32 bar chunk, 32 bar chunk. And then like each 32 bars is split up into a 16 bar there. And then there's an eight bar there. And then there's a four bar and two bar and a one bar. And just, it splits down like that because it's part of the whole four by four bar structure and it makes it easy for DJs. So as nice as it sounds, we're making club music at the end of the day. DJs have to be able to play it. So just make it predictable. Don't be that cool kid who's like, mm, I'm going to have it drop there, not on the 64th bar. I'm going to have this build and it's going to do something stupid and then drop because you just annoy the DJs. And then if a DJ is kind of panicking up there, no one's dancing, and then he expects something to drop and then it doesn't drop for two bars later, I'll tell you what, he's going to be angry. Chemicals are going to be going up. He's like, have I screwed up? Have I counted wrong? But no, you counted right, you just produced it awkwardly. And then he's not going to play your track again. And yeah, just, you got to make it predictable enough. Like, it's about choosing the right points to be unpredictable. And I think something that you don't want to screw with is things like the 32 and the 60. Or say, like, probably more accurately, that every 16 bars, you want to have it kind of the change to be every 16 bars you can kind of mix it up around inside the 16 bars but at the start of every 16 just keep it standard because that's what DJs count around and that's really important um, so make sure you do that and it's pretty pretty standard stuff like for the drop it was either going to be there or 16 bars forward there or it was going to be there I kind of arbitrarily chose there because I was like eh, let's have a minute of intro and then a minute of build arbitrary stuff but you got to have it structured like that it's really important cool so it's basic structure sorted um when i was making the track what did i do after that well i did the easy bit i basically i made the intro the intro 32 bars and the outro 32 bars and for that literally same as the main bit except i made it more regular like although there's a few variations in the kick they're all four to the floor kicks and it's more regular if you look at this pattern it's pretty pretty consistent now there are a few changes but it's not it's not as changey as this and that's important because basically if you haven't DJed when you're DJing and you're kind of mixing something in you don't want it going completely mental because firstly no one's going to hear all your cool edits you made and secondly it makes it harder for the DJ to do stuff so keep it pretty simple and then obviously start off more empty and then kind of bring more stuff in. So here, this first eight bars, it's only, there's only simps here and here. 
around those little things and then here make it more full here make it even more fuller and then here it's even fuller even though it doesn't look it because this one has base in it and these don't have base so you see what I've basically been doing is I've used what I just told you about everything being in chunks so split these 16 and a half you have an 8 bar chunk so there's an 8 bar chunk here and then an 8 bar chunk here and I've just made basically been making it fuller and fuller as it goes through and that makes the DJ's job easy because he can pretty much just whack play there and he doesn't have to use much EQ to kind of filter everything in he can he can pretty much just press play and whether or not he wants the kicks there or not that's his choice but the synths will come in in a natural way for him to kind of turn everything down on the other track before so just, just make it easy for them like if you're making a club banger which is basically what I'm doing you can have a relatively boring first 32 bars that's perfectly fine it's kind of accepted and it, but it is more interesting than a load of tracks you see that are just drums I do hate that it's like drums don't add anything to the drums aren't the character of the track at least they're not in like electro and stuff so it's like uh, DJs just learn to count properly or have something just subtly interesting like this so yeah anyway that's my rant over also you'll notice as far as how I arranged it I did just what I told you earlier about kind of repeating sections and then just changing it so it's like same 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 change and then repeated that there and that's kind of same 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 change and that's the same pattern as this except it's just one bit change it's just it's all about just changing it a little bit don't change it a lot but do it kind of over a an interval. It's, it's, um, also, the best point to have a really weird bit is right before the start of a new chunk. So, like there, right before the start of the eight, or like right before the start of the sixteen, or right before the start of the start of the thirty-two. Like here, you'll see there's nothing because there's something here. But that's where you want the weird change, right before the start of a new phrase or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, so that's how I arrange the intro. Similar to the outro, just in reverse. Start up a bit fuller. And then, yeah, semi arbitrarily chose the pattern, but definitely made it pretty similar, but just different to the intro because you might as well make it, might as well make it different. That like corona's good, nice and cold. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'd started, I got uh, all these electro things and the kicks, and then I'd basically, I'd write, right, done the dancey bit, done the intro, outro, what's, what's left to do? I've got the build and I've got other details. That's basically all there is to it. There's no vocal in this, so it's done the dancey bit, done the intro, done the outro. What's next? I did, I did this whole track pretty formulaically, to be honest. Um, the build. So, yeah. Um, I started on the build. Basically, what I did is I started with this synth build, this what I call Electro One build, which is basically this preset but tweaked quite a bit. Not that much, um, but I basically, I automated the, what did I automate? The pitch definitely, and maybe I automated a few things, but I basically used the macro knobs on massive and automated them over 32 bars. Um, I think I might have low passed it as well and then kind of brought that, automated that up. So pretty standard build, build, build building. And I ended up with this. See how it kind of starts off really small and then it opens up. It's standard build stuff. You start off with not much there and then you kind of bring everything in slowly over time and that's what automation does. And I'm not going to give you the details on how you automate, but that's for another tutorial. Basically, automate parameters over a period of time and especially if you want to really build, have the pitch going up. Down sometimes work, but up works really well. It's not rocket science, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's just pretty standard stuff, to be honest. You just, you have a cool noise, automate the pitch, maybe automate another parameter or two with the pitch, just so it changes over time. And then, yeah, sorted, you get this cool synthy build. And then I might have automated the volume a bit to make it go from quieter to louder. It's pretty obvious stuff, like, start off with not much, bring a load of stuff in, build people up, uplift them, and get them excited. 
like that by itself would have been cool but i wanted to add something more in because this is pretty empty it's i say empty it's pretty simple it's it's just a bass sound and a few synth noises kind of almost layered up and then i wanted a more complicated stuff going on in the build so yeah worked on making making some more complicated stuff now it's worth noting it's a triplet feel throughout the whole thing so everything i've done has been pretty much on a triplet grid which is worth noting because it's things like when i have these snares building up Those um those snares are there and that little bit wait, are on the triplet grid. So you see if I click, it's on the triplet grid, which you see yeah it's on the triplet grid. So it kind of keeps everything consistent. Basically, rule of thumb: you can't mix triplet patterns with normal um, non-triplet patterns. So like it just it doesn't mix over each other. It sounds horrible. It's virtually impossible to make it work. So. If you have something triplet, keep everything else triplet. Yeah, and then what did I do after that? Still recording? Yeah, basically after that, I worked on just adding some more to it. So I had this thing, I don't know what that is. Um, Okay, I think I figured it out. This Electro 6 build is basically what I did here for Electro 1 to Electro 1 build is I took this preset, automated the pitch and possibly one other parameter, maybe a low pass filter, did exactly the same going from Electro 6 to Electro 6 build. Except this time, once I bounced out the audio like I had it, I chopped it up. So I basically took out the front bit. That just did something a bit different, it gives it Kind of like an alarmy sound, but you'll see. Like, so you see, same idea. Just bring stuff in, automate something. Simple, automate something. If it sounds good, stick it in. It that's your build sorted, and then yeah. And after that, I basically, even though I was doing the build. I left it as that for a bit, which I did it weird. I kind of, I did half the build and then I went on to add these details and then I came back to do the rest of the build. Not sure why, but that's how I did it. So I'll continue showing you in the order that I actually did the track. So there's all these details basically from, um, let's get rid of that. From probably I'd say there down to there are all okay ignore that i'd say these are the important like the quote-unquote details that stuff with the build um basically i called it top air small air and then reverse which is just to show the air is hopefully you can hear that basically it is very heavily high passed reverb atmosphere thing. Basically some noise of some kind. Just a nice airy, very heavily high passed noise. Just to fill up the top end, because you can add as much top end as you want and you won't necessarily hear it. Like if you listen chances are when you listen to the track you didn't hear all these like sections of air. But what they do is subconsciously it keeps you interested. It, it, it's just, it adds another level of detail that you probably don't really hear, it just washes over you, but it signals to your brain that something subtle is changing, so the track's not too repetitive. And because it only takes up the top end of the frequency spectrum, it doesn't kind of ruin everything else you've done with the synths. So I'll just play this bit, for example. Uh, uh, specifically listen out for the top air to see if you can actually hear it because you notice if you listen out for it you can hear it but if you don't listen out for it you don't really hear it
See, it's kind of subtle, but I'll tell you what, all those little details make a big difference. And in this particular track, there's not that many details, just these three layers. Like, especially in like dubstep or something, or well, just because I know dubstep, I know dubstep. There's so many details in these top end songs that just wash over you, and you just think, oh, cool. But you listen out critically, and you suddenly start to hear all these little sound effects and little details, and yeah, there's an awful lot in there. And um, especially if you're doing these airy type things, just throw them in, not quite randomly, but similar to how with these patterns, you kind of repeat bits and then change it. That's basically what you want here, like that that is repeated over was well, that's the same as I don't even know but like that's all repetitive and then that's not quite repetitive whereas that section is the same as that section so it's just it's the same but different it's the it's just come back to it over and over again and it's something I'll say a lot because it's an important bit you get this you kind of you get the whole point of music and it's it needs to be enough of something people know and enough of something they don't know and in this case we're talking repetition so it's there to there it's repetitive it's because it's the same as that but the fact it's not all like that means it's not too repetitive so it's defining the right balance and there's no right balance but you make that choice and that's the choice I made um, for example this reverse noise which is just another one of these top end things Although it's not that top endy, it is pretty repetitive. So it's an example of the repetitive bit, and then these bits kind of break it up, make it less repetitive. So I just show you this reverse standard stuff. To be honest, like it's just one of these short reverses you get like in sample packs and stuff. They're everywhere. Short reverses, sweeps, all that kind of stuff. It's just high pass because you don't need the low end. It's important to make it. So yeah, that's it's standard stuff like things like having these reverses just before the start of every new chunk is something I didn't know about when I started producing. So my tracks didn't sound right. But once you know it, it's obvious and you listen out for it in tracks and they're everywhere. It's just it's one of those things. If you've seen it, it's obvious. If you haven't seen it, it's new to you. Corona is good. Anyway. Um well, so yeah, after that, I basically I did the build, which is all this kind of stuff, so. Build things. get the idea basically what I did here is because for this there's no real melody like there's a pattern but it's all the same note like I think it's a G but it's a G over and over again just twisted what I wanted is I wanted some actual like chord progressions and some melody thing just to kind of keep it interesting and it tends to work really well for builds because you hear it once or twice and suddenly your brain remembers it and then it knows what's coming up and it gets exciting it's just standard stuff kind of chord progressions kind of chord progressions and then arpeggios which is what this thing is repeated over say like four bars eight bars they work really well for builds and again it's a standard stuff with builds start off with not much and then build more stuff in um and yeah it's all it's all worth noting for example that for this arpeggio thing um, it's all triplet, it's all in triplet time, which is, well, as I said before, you can't mix up 
non-triplet time and then triplet time it doesn't work so now this triplet thing works in time with this build and this build and these snares and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's kind of obvious stuff but until you know it it's not obvious um yeah and yeah this is simply preset ableton preset and ableton this is a very simple preset or not a preset a very simple preset i made myself in massive and um over time i automate the decay so it kind of it fills out as it goes over time so i just illustrate that see it kind of fills out starts off more plucky and empty it's it's a subtle thing but you do a lot of subtle things it all adds up and then basically the whole point of this build it fills out and then it goes all away and then it comes back standard build stuff create the tension build everything up hold them and then drop it um, yeah I mean like the chord progression just got that playing about I don't know music, I don't even know what chords they are, I don't know what key it is, don't really care. It's just stuff like the arpeggio bit is basically just the chord progression cut up. So that way I know it sounds good together because I'm not musical, I can't write an arpeggio on top of a chord progression and know that it sounds good so I have to do it the old school way. Just take the chord progression, cut it up, maybe change one or two notes but keep it on the notes used before and then it's all good. It's pretty simple. It sounds good. Yeah, um, but yeah, no. Keep chord progressions. Keep that on the triplet grid as well. It's just I've said it a lot of times, but it's an important beginner tip. Um, this whole thing's kind of geared towards beginners, I guess. But whatever, we're all beginners once. Um, yeah, and then I got ting build. Wonder what that is. Yeah. It's just standard, standard kind of snary type build where you have just a pattern and then you half the length of a note and then it's just repeat it and then just like before, automate some parameters. In this case, it'll be a high pass filter, which will be that one. See that move up? It's just it's something different because it, the rest of this fills up, so this is just emptying out a bit, but. To be honest, you don't really hear this. It's just like an extra detail that's just in the background. Like these details, they don't add much themselves, but they kind of they just wash over you in the background. And that's something, if your tracks aren't sounding very, like they're missing something. Normally when you're beginning it's effects, but apart from once you've figured out that you need effects on stuff, it's chances are you're not adding in all these details and stuff, so yeah just adding details make them quite quiet so they don't distract and it's all good pretty much um and then yeah down here we have just a tsh noise pretty quiet and then big old hall kick again standard stuff not reinventing the wheel it's every now and then there's just a big on the uh, on an eight bar, over an eight bar bit. It's kind of it's off the these cool kicks are off the main chunks, but that's cool. Mixing things up, kind of you got to keep things again as I said before predictable but not predictable. So you'd expect these big kind of hall kicks, which are just samples by the way from a sample pack. Like there's no fancy crazy processing of a kick through reverb. Someone else has done that for me just chose a cool sound and layered it with a cool long noise on top and uh, yeah so it's kind of it's repetitive but it's not where it's supposed to be so just got to keep things interesting and yeah and by the time I'd add in that and then some more of these reverses just before the, the big booms and I'd add in this snare build
yeah, again, standard snare build. It's not even that complicated, but it's just, it adds something in, like you see every eight bars, so you have eight bars, something new comes in, eight bars, something new comes in. Um, and then, yeah, something new comes in every eight bars, and then it drops, so it's all done in chunks, just, it's nice and symmetrical, but then throw something off, but not too far off, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then after that, I had to have a pretty cliched thing before the drop. So it's this little love hate thing. Love hate. Now, the weird thing with this one is it's a really predictable build, and then it was almost too predictable. So I cut it two bars short, which was right on the limit of being too long. If I'd cut it a bar, one bar short, it would have held people just where they wanted. But I cut it two bars short, so it threw them off a bit. Because especially with this, like, I think it's an eight bar long kind of chord progression, people expecting the chord progression to go right to the drop. But I don't, I screw with them, because screwing people is always good. Um, so I had this kind of very cliched word before the drop. Um, so this cool build, word before the drop, they're going, wait, I'm really unsatisfied what went on, because they expect satisfaction of the the chord progression finishing with the little arpeggio arp thing. But then you throw them off with this, kind of take everything away, like take it away from them. And then they spend slightly too long being confused and annoyed because they realize they haven't been held in the predictable way you do with these tracks. And then I drop it and then it's back to normal. It's uh, it's kind of the most non-standard bit of the song is the fact I've got this weird two bar, very unsatisfying word bit before the drop, but I like it. Basically, the track was being very, very predictable. So I thought I have to mix things up a bit. And it's one of those things like, I've been in like raves and stuff enough times where they've kind of they've had a weird bit before the drop or the drop hasn't quite dropped and everyone expected and it kind of it confuses you and it throws you off and you're like what what and then it drops and you realize how mental the drop is and how awesome it is and then you get excited again so it kind of as opposed to like being like trance specifically that is really predictable and really satisfying you get bored of it too quickly because it's you get the satisfaction every time this makes you unsatisfied and then it comes back into it so it's just fucking with people basically but that's good keeps things interesting and um yeah another reason why i had this kind of word before the drop is for the simple reason if you don't have any words in it people won't remember the name of the song or they'll find it unless they absolutely love it and they listen to it all the time they won't remember the name of the song and it sounds like a stupid reason but if you want people to remember your track give them something to remember about it which is the name of it so like in this case I just got the words love and hate arbitrarily because I had a big list of that I can probably show you um here they go on there you go see these words move jump fatter hate love so basically, I had all this list of words. I thought, I've got to have some words so that people know how to remember the song. And then I just chose love and hate. They're kind of opposite. Uh, it's kind of arbitrary. I guess you could read into it, but it's just an arbitrary word, to be honest. It doesn't mean anything. Um, it's kind of nice. It gives it kind of a light and dark kind of love and hate. It's just love and hate seem like a nicer two words than dance go jump fight maybe f fight would have been cool or maybe bigger stronger but then you get too much into trying to sound like daft punk so yeah and then just basically stretched it out tweaked the what did i do yeah he cued it a bit limited a bit crushed it a bit just basically gave it more character so it didn't sound just really boring like Everybody am your drop. See, drop. just sounded too. I mean, that would have sounded right, but I swear, 
give it a slightly eviler twist to it. And um, yeah, this atmosphere and I don't know, this is just some subtle background. But yeah, that's pretty much why I put that there. And then again, it's just a standard reverse and then a subtle, really, really subtle airy sweep. It's it's all pretty simple stuff to be honest. The track isn't that complicated, which is why I chose it because. I think especially when you just start out, it can be a bit intimidating starting with a blank canvas and being like, oh, what do I, how do I do it? Do I just start at the beginning? And then I knew when I started, I mean, it helped that I DJed a bit. So I knew about like phrasing, like everything had to come in in certain 16 bars and eight bars and 32 bars, but it can, it can be quite confusing at first. So it's probably quite useful just to see the rough structure of a track. And I think it's quite clear here. Um, also worth noting for this build, just like I've said a million times, copy and paste something, but then just change it a bit. So in this case, copied this build, took out that hall kick, and then I chopped off most of this electro build. So it's kind of feels a lot more empty. So it feels like something's changed, but you know what's coming. It's like it's just the standard thing of music. It's got to have something people know and then it's got to be changed up enough so they don't know what's coming up, they don't know what it is. It's the it's that balance. And that's basically pretty much no matter what you do, it's finding that balance. Don't make it too mental. I know I put out experimental tracks, but I don't release them on labels or charge with them because I know you can't DJ with them. They're too mental, they're just me playing about. Um, so if you want to release club bangers, don't make it too predictable, otherwise no one's going to find your track interesting. But don't make it too mental, because people have to know about it. It's, I've said it like maybe 20 times now, but that's the whole point. So, how long's it been? Wrong one. 51 minutes, so. Just spend another nine minutes talking about stuff, basically. So yeah, that was basically the whole track. I haven't shown you the engineering side of it, but I have shown you another tutorial how I made that preset. And like, there's no real drums, like kicks, no processing. Like, seriously, get a decent sample pack. Don't bother with processing kicks, unless you're doing something mental, or you have a really obscure sound you want. Just, I mean, you, I've, most sample packs come, like decent ones, like the one I've got is Dead Mouse Zephyr, kicks, analog kicks, 122, big kicks. 77 and like I got folders full it's like Dead Mouse has made every kick I can possibly imagine and then he's done 50 other kinds of kick I can possibly imagine and he's made it better than I ever could he's with a better environment with better machines he knows what he's doing so why should I bother compressing it or EQing it or anything like that like he's done it all for me there's absolutely no point like you you can get away with it. You not you don't have to make everything from scratch. That's not how, at least electronic dance music works. You you find the right balance between making your own stuff and using other people's. Like, I made all these synths. Um, I wrote all these chord progressions and melody lines. But here use some presets. Here use some samples. Like here use some samples. Um, here I basically use some samples and and processed it so. It's finding the balance, and especially with kicks, like, I know, because I've chosen a Dead Mouse kick, although he made it with Steve Duda, it's worth knowing, who's a arguably better at sound engineering than Dead Mouse. Um, I know those kicks are going to sound good in the club. There's no debate in it, providing I don't go completely mental on the mastering, or even if I go quite mental on the mastering, I know these kicks are going to sound good, because I've used a sample for, that I know, and I have confidence that it's going to sound good, so... Whereas if you just take a random kick, like try to salvage a bad one, or you take a good one and you try and change it into something you want, you could completely ruin it. So literally every kind of kick is here, and even ones you'll never use. So just get a decent set of kick drums, and then you're sorted. Same goes with snares. I've never processed a snare, but yet most of my snares sound fatter and better than a lot of snares I see. So it's just like, don't redo something you don't need to. Like sound engineering, sound design, it's a bit creative, but 
It's nowhere near as creative as making a track, so don't worry if you're just using the straight samples. You don't have to process it. Now, I seem to have rammed that down your face, but it's something that I see too many people trying to process their drums, especially they don't need to. Just save it till master and leave all that gluing, whatever you like to call it, till mastering stage. Um, yeah. Right, I went off on a tangent. What was my point? Can't remember my point. Anyway. Oh yeah, the, the fact that I didn't show you how I made everything. Yeah, whatever. Like, I've got enough tutorial showing you how, how you make sounds, so that's all good. Um, yeah, five minutes. How did I mix it? Quote unquote mixing. Well, in this case, I did what I normally do, which is half mix it as I go. So, things like... Um, let's give you an example. This, where there's no bass in Retro 5 and 6. I've taken all the bottom end out. See? All the bottom end out is gone. It means that there's nothing interfering with these kicks. So that sub-region that is really hard to get right without amazing speakers. I just know it's going to be good, even though I can't necessarily hear it through my headphones. Um, I know because I've used a solid sample and I've basically taken everything out of everything that isn't a solid sample. I know it's going to be good. Um, similarly with all these air things, you take out all the bottom end. It's just, if it's not a kick or a bass, take out the bottom end. It's something I've got in the habit of just dragging on this preset I made mega low cut, but you can just make it of stacking up EQ8s, just like stack up high passes. Just get in the habit. It's something that a lot of producers do. Every time you add something that isn't a bass or a kick, chuck this kind of preset on that takes all the low, low end out because you just don't need it. It doesn't add anything. It just a, makes a bunch of rumble noise, which makes your mix sound horrible. Um, yeah. And so similarly with getting the bass right with these Electro 1, 2, 3, 4 presets, I know the bass is going to be good because I made the bass in Massive and I know how it was rooted and it was relatively simple. So even though I, I can't necessarily hear the subtle details in the bass, because I made the bass preset and had an understanding of what went on with the synthesis, I know the bass is going to be clean and it's going to sound really good. Of course I got a sidechain compression on which just gets the bass out of the way when the kick's needed. Standard stuff. Standard stuff, I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, yeah, everything else, let's have a look, like panning, I think I, yeah, in the build, because I have quite a lot going on, I pan some stuff to the side, like Electro, Electro 1 build, panned it to the right, Electro 6 build, panned it to the left, I think clavichord, yeah, a bit to the right, triply art, a little bit off centre, it's just kind of putting it in their place. Uh, I mean, I'm not an expert mixer, but I know mixing well enough, like, there was too much going on, couldn't hear the individual components, so I stuck some of them out to the side. Pretty simple stuff. It's also things like this arp, this chord, and this clavichord, and this guitar noise. Um, they're taking up different octaves, like that one is an octave lower than that one, that one's an octave lower than that one. It just means that you don't have all the frequencies clashing, basically. It's, if you have too much going on in one space, you won't distinguish the instruments and it'll sound horrible. So, yeah, I mean, sounds pretty obvious, but give stuff its own space. If you add in any track, make sure it has its own space and it's not fighting for something. And the only real examples of something where you don't have to consider that is all the details, because these are kind of subtle and they're mostly top end anyway, so. I mean, they don't actually add any character, so it doesn't matter that you can't distinguish this small air sound. Whereas you do want to be able to distinguish like the synth sound, or say that from that from that. Doesn't matter that you can't necessarily distinguish that from that because it's, that doesn't add character. That adds the character, so that needs to be distinguished. Give it its own space. Um, again, not going to go into the super technical details, but that's basically what I was doing. Um, yeah, what else, mixing wise, just set the levels. Like, I kind of, I process the sound as I insert it normally, so. I don't do too much processing after that. It's just making sure the levels are right. <clears throat> and it's just stuff like, from experience and having looked at enough waveforms in Tractor when DJing, I know roughly how high the kick. 
if the kick's going that high, I need these simps to be going like just a little bit louder. See, kicks are going up there, and because I want the simps really loud, I kind of put them up to there. And you know why that's awesome? Because it means I don't have to bother with like mental compression or whatever, like later on, because basically. Remember, people, you don't don't compress everything by default. I see so many people that need to learn compression and they just compress everything. It's just like, remember, compression is just volume automation. That is all it is. So if you use proper samples and you synthesize your own sounds like I have here, you don't need to synthesize because it's like you've made the sound like the dynamics how you want because you synthesized it. You made it how you want. And then... As far as getting it the right kind of as close to the kick as you want, just set the level. It's like, duh, why bother with compression if you don't need it? It's just like, see, it ends up just taking the life away and making it sound crap. So, yeah, that's a bit of another another rant which I might go off on one day. But just put, don't randomly put stuff in. Like, use samples and then try. Basically, my advice is ignore compression unless you absolutely think you need it. Never compress for loudness until you're at the mastering stage for a start. Um, and if you're gonna compress, make sure it's just because you wanna give it more punch or something. And to be honest, I've never needed to do that because I just pick good samples. Like, Dead Mouse is better at compression than me, so why should I ruin one of his lovely compressed snares with some stupid compression thing I don't really understand, so it's just like, yeah, don't compress unless you for a start understand it and then if you actually need to, like just work on getting the volume of shit right. Like it would have been easy for me to have these electro presets and set them too low and then needing to stick on the master chain in mastering or beforehand a compressor to bring up the louder to bring up the kind of the level of these electro sims like um in relation to these kicks. But you can just set the levels right. It's, it seems obvious but I see so many people worrying about that kind of stuff. It's like, remember, compression is just volume automation, so get it right as you do it. Seems simple. Anyway, time check. One hour, one minute. So that's basically it, to be honest. It's not a mental complicated track. It's, it's kind of a banger, but with a few twists, like before, just before this drop bit. Um, yeah, it is what it is. This sort of thing goes off in the club. Not necessarily listening at home music, maybe kind of fist pumping in the car music. I don't know what you're into, but yeah, um, that's the track. And then for mastering, obviously I'll get it mastered either by myself properly or send it off to a proper master in house um, when it gets released. But I need to hear back from the label this track is going out on before I bother with that. So I just did a rough master. And I've done a tutorial on rough mastering before. It's basically just pick a preset in Ozone, limit it reasonably heavily, and that gives you a rough master. Obviously, if you're putting the track out as a proper release or as a track you're really stoked on, master it properly. But in this case, I didn't because it was more of a more of a demo. I in I guess like like before the release goes out, I might try and dial in some of this some of these tracks like maybe mix it in a bit more maybe change up before the drop but I don't know it's kind of alright as it is and um I was excited about it when I made it like it's one of the tracks you need to crank really loud and like I know I said before everything sounds better turned up so you shouldn't have to turn it up really loud for it to sound good but if it's a club banger like this like it needs to be loud like <laughs> If you're listening through laptop speakers, quiet, like that'll do, that won't excite you, but listen through like PA system or through headphones cranked, suddenly you get all that like reverb going through your ears and like, or it was in a club, you just get hit with a like kick in the chest, like totally different experience. Like this track was designed for raves. Anyway, that's been the deconstruction of the track. I think I'll probably call this how I made semicolon love hate um let me know what you think um it's been a bit of an experimental tutorial not sure how into it people will be but 
I wasn't sure how into the t tutorials people would be when I first started making them, but people seem to be, so yeah. Um, let me know if you're into it. If not, just put a hate comment and I might not do as many of these, but I would have found this interesting when I started out, so hopefully you do too. Sweet, check me out on Facebook, everything below, just to avoid me plugging you with links. Um, just see below me right now. There's a bunch of links to my social media. Follow me on that. It's all good. Sweet. Have fun making music.